dead and buried. But God raised him from the dead. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. Christ is appointed Savior and Judge of living and dead, and everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. This is the work of the living God. It is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. We come together today to celebrate. The tomb could not hold our Lord Jesus, but we also come with the knowledge that the reason he went to the tomb is because of our human sinful nature. So we come into God's presence and we bring with us our brokenness, our shortcomings, we acknowledge our sin, and we come before God offering our confession, asking for God's grace and mercy. Let us join our voices in our prayer of confession. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that leads to death. Lord, bring new life where we are warm and tired, new love where we have turned our hearts, forgiveness where we feel hurt and where we have wounded, and the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit where we are prisoners of ourselves. Almighty God, hear us now as we each offer our own silent prayer of confession. In Jesus' name, amen. To each and every person whose regret is real, who places their trust in Jesus Christ, Jesus pronounces pardon, grants us the right to begin again. In Christ we are a new creation, and this, this is good news. Receive it, believe it, proclaim it. Alleluia. Amen. As you are able to stand together for our response. <laughs>
Tell me your name. You're Colton. Yeah. And are these your cousins yeah. or your brothers? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I wasn't quite sure if I remembered the family relationship right or not. Well, I'm very glad to see you. Did any of you have an Easter egg hunt this morning? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. find? Yeah, at Grandma's house, she had an Easter egg hunt? No, You got another one? <laughs> Good for you. So, do you have your Easter egg hunt inside the house or outside? Inside. Inside. That's how I had mine sometimes when I was a little kid. Yes, I was a little kid. Okay. Well, I'm very happy that you were all here today. Yeah, you have to be careful with that. <laughs> Can you guys tell me what's on my soul today? What are these? Butterflies. Butter butterflies, yeah. What do you think butterflies have to do with Easter time? They fly over people. They fly over people, that's true. But spring, it's a, it's, um, they're a harbinger of spring or summer. But what do you know about the life cycle of a butterfly? Does the butterfly always look like a butterfly? What does it start out as? As a caterpillar, right. And then at one point, it goes into a cocoon, and then it becomes something else. And it becomes one of these beautiful kinds of butterflies, doesn't it? So it has a transformation. One of the what kind is? I'm not sure. It's pretty though, isn't it? So one of the things that we talk about at Easter time is transformation and new life. And so butterflies remind us that in Jesus Christ, we follow Jesus Christ, we'll have new life because we'll be like new people. We'll know how to be kinder and love people better and say nice, be thoughtful and helping our parents and our siblings. And so those are all good things, right? That we want to be good people. The good thing I looked before I came out here, these are little scratch-offs that you can take back to your seat and use this um, paper clip. I chose not to give the sticks that came with the kit. <laughs> and then you'll have to put them on a book and you can scrape, scrape the black off and you will see something new underneath there. I'm going to change and give you this one. Okay, so maybe after church or during church, you could either one. I take that little paper clip and scratch the black off, and it will re reveal a design underneath that you can take home and hang on your refrigerator or wherever you put great works of art at your house. <laughs> All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can come together and celebrate with music and song and hearing God's word about Jesus' life and death and his resurrection and how that lives in our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, it's good to meet you. Hope we'll see you again before long. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, Mom, Sydney, and Toby. See you later.
to the Lord for the day yet. This was a very good Let Israel say, This was a very good The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory be found in the sense of the righteousness. The Lord's right hand has done mighty work. The Lord's right hand has lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but the Lord. Can you put yourself 
in the place of those women on that early morning. What they might have thought, what they might have imagined when they got to that tomb, not only to find that stone rolled away from the entrance, but looking inside, that tomb was empty. Jesus' body was not there. Though it was early in the morning, and perhaps it wasn't quite light outside, they might have thought their eyes were still blurry from sleep. But did they think they were dreaming? Did they think they had come to the wrong tomb? Yet these were some of Jesus' closest friends and disciples, these women. How could they ever forget where they had laid the body one they all loved so dearly? It was absolutely the right tomb. But his body was gone. The women were perplexed about this. Hardly seems a strong enough word, does it? Perplexed. How would you feel if you were standing at the entrance of that tomb? Someone who you'd seen buried there three days before, and now that body was gone. I would say it's more likely they were looking around in apprehension and fear, wondering what could have happened. Wondering if the authorities had come back, if they had stolen Jesus' body, if someone else had taken it. They knew Jesus was dead. Everything they had dreamed and hoped of, everything that had given meaning to their lives for these last three years had been buried in that tomb and sealed with the rolling of that stone. Jesus was dead. He was his body was to be in that tomb. But it was not there. How is that even possible? And then Luke tells us about these two men standing beside them, telling them that he isn't here. He is risen. And if they weren't already scared and apprehensive to see these two men in clothing that was dazzling bright would further add to your fear and apprehension, I would think. They had to be wondering what in the world was going on. Perhaps by this point, they're elevated from perplexed to terrified. But Luke tells us that once these men reminded the women of what Jesus had said about what was to happen to him, about his death and his resurrection, it was like a light going on. They suddenly understood. They left their doubts behind. They were no longer so perplexed. They were no longer afraid. They knew exactly what that empty tomb meant. It meant that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. And the women turned and headed back to share the good news with the eleven. These women, these are the first Easter people going from the empty tomb telling the good news. Right through the fiction may have been gruesome, but when it seemed that death had the last word, God hadn't given the last word. God's work wasn't finished. After three days in the grave, Jesus arose. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again. Jesus Christ has conquered death, not only for himself, but for every one of us. There are times when we might find ourselves in dark places. And we can identify with the women on that Easter morning. In their grief, in their feelings of loss, in their confusion and their despair. We might feel that everything is lost. We don't understand what's happening. Yet even in the darkness of that time, in that chaos, in our confusion, just like God did on that Easter morning, God can break through in triumph and roll that stone away and open the way for us, setting us free from what holds us back. God in bodily form, which is Jesus Christ, modeled a life of humility, of servanthood, of unconditional love. He died a humiliating and excruciating death for our sins, and then returned from the dead to prove to those who needed more evidence that our God keeps promises, fulfills the scriptures. Assured that Christ keeps God's promises, we tell the resurrection story every year because as believers in the resurrected Messiah, 
Jesus Christ's victory over death is also our story. The empty tomb and Christ's resurrection means that we are no longer entombed by fears and doubts, but we are transformed. We are empowered to live in confidence and the assurance in the, in the power of Christ. We are people that are renewed and restored by God's grace and Christ's sacrifice. Jesus Christ rose from the dead to offer each one of us a new beginning, transforming us and making us new as we believe in Christ. So that going forward, we can live in certainty knowing that our God is the Lord over life and death, over sin and salvation, over good and evil. And we no longer need to fear death, for Jesus Christ conquered death through his resurrection. We who believe in Jesus Christ will have life after death because we believe in Jesus' promise of eternal life and our salvation. We can celebrate that the story did not end on that good Friday with Christ's death. That God hasn't given up on us. That all of us who trust in the risen Christ are Easter people. Christ is risen. The grave could not hold him. Easter people believe and rejoice. Ring the bell, sound the trumpet, sing out boldly, continue to celebrate and tell the story. Let us not stop telling the story that Christ has conquered death. Today is about good news. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ reigns in power. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are Easter people. We are transformed by the power and grace of our God. Say it with me. We are Easter people. We are Easter people. We are Easter people. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Our final verse is number 104. Christ is risen, shot to Santa. As you are able, you are encouraged to stand. Yeah, there are some who do not share our Easter joy. 
We pray for those for whom faith is elusive. We pray for those who live without faith, hope, or love. We pray for those who live confused in despair and who do not or cannot see God in at work, renewing, restoring, transforming them for the world around them. Oh God, we lift up this day those who deal with constant pain, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual. We pray that they might find peace. On this day of joy, we know there are many who mourn, and our hearts go out to them. Our prayers lifted on their behalf, Almighty God, that you might give them comfort, that their dark hours in time may be replaced by peace and your assurance of love for them. We pray for those who find themselves displaced from homes and familiar places unsure of what the next day holds, who are seeking shelter and safety. Lord, guide them in these days to places of safety and those who can help them. And Almighty God, as much as you have desire peace and harmony among your children, we seldom seem to be able to live together in peace. So we pray for those caught in fire. Those seeking safety and shelter, especially women and children who are caught in war or armed conflict, we pray God that assault against the innocent will cease, that humanity might be a way to live in peace with one another. Even as we celebrate Christ's resurrection, we have yet to see Christ's vision of people loving and serving one another consistently come to fruition. Help us, O oh God, always to seek to put our better impulses into action that we might act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, God, and one another. And Lord, we pray for your resurrection power for your church. When we despair that we are not enough, that we cannot see the next step, remind us that your timing is perfect. Remind us that some of your best work was done in a graveyard. Lord, give us the ability to live boldly as each of people, Sharing the good news of resurrection and transformation, may we reach out to be your hands and feet, loving our neighbors as well as our str as strangers. Lord, we pray that we might live each day in the light of the truth that because of Jesus' love for us, every morning, every morning is Easter morning. We offer these prayers for the world and for ourselves, and pray together as Christ has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The line is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Easter people, let us respond to God's promises to us by offering back to God the gifts that we can for God's service. You may deposit your one great hour offering envelope in the box at the rear of the sanctuary along with your regular offering. And you can learn more excuse me, about the one great hour charity in the insert in your bulletin and then how they're working. Excuse me, working out of the world. So now another offering from the book.
Thank you again, Jay and Belfire. As we are able to stand together for our biology, which is printed in your book. Hallelujah. 